gentlemen, welcome back. I told you it'd be pretty quick. We are here already. So next up, we have our next competitor who looks primed and ready. But first of all, we need to welcome on our wonderful judges who we haven't seen yet today from this side. So a big round of applause for the judges. Big round of applause for the judges. They're doing a hard it's job. It's a hard job to taste all these cocktails. And let me allow to introduce a competitor representing Australia on our coffee, Danny Wilson. Good luck, Danny. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Excellent. You guys are comfortable? Uh, can I please just hear my music briefly? Excellent. That sounds good. Uh, can I just get that started over again? Okay, let's get underway. Time. Good afternoon, judges. It's great to be here with you in Milan. My name's Danny, and coffee cocktails have taken me around the world. Today, I'm excited because I get to bring you on that journey with me. So let's start with my cold designer drink, the Espresso Memento, and our first stop in Malaysia. Judges, I'd like to introduce you to Caffea liberica, a species of coffee distinct from both Arabica and Robusta. This lot comes from Jason Liu at My Liberica in Johor, Malaysia, from trees at only 60 meters above sea level. This is what I love about Liberica. It's climate resistant, it's already found around the world, it's a species of coffee ready for our future. Unfortunately, it's a declining industry because of its unusual flavor profile. But where others see unusual, I see opportunity. By taking processes pioneered in the Barista Championship, we've lifted Liberica to new heights. By combining non-saccharomyces yeast with anaerobic fermentation, this year, Jason's coffees are incredible. Flavors like vibrant citrus, chocolate, ripe tropical fruits, and a botanical finish more persistent than any Arabica I've ever tried. So I've started with four espressos at a recipe of 20 grams in, 40 grams out, a recipe that's familiar to baristas around the world. To that, I'm gonna be adding 25 mils of passion fruit syrup. Thirty mils of Roku gin. Now they use less juniper and soft Japanese florals for a rounder profile in their gin. And 90 mils of sparkling apple juice, all of which is going into my mini keg here, which is just a smaller, more portable version of a commercial beer tap. It's very possible to pre-batch and carbonate drinks overnight for service in cafes and bars and at events. But for rapid preparation, just for the both of you today, I'm going to be adding 10 grams of dry ice. Now this is gonna do a couple of things. Firstly, it's gonna pressurize my mini keg here to a safe and regulated 20 PSI. You'll probably hear the little safety valve go off shortly. But it's also gonna bring us down to our serving temperature of two degrees. Now what I love about the Espresso Memento is the use of off-the-shelf ingredients that come together to create an exceptional experience that develops in the glass. What you're gonna see is when you take your first sip at two degrees, you have a crisp acidity, a moussey texture with a gentle fizz you'll see the passion fruit and citrus. Thank you. When you take your second sip, the temperature is going to come up to three degrees. The acidity is going to soften a little bit and you'll be able to see more juniper coming from the gin. And then I want you to swirl the glass for 15 seconds and take a third sip. The temperature is going to come up to five degrees and the flavors of the coffee are really going to open up you get this amazing flavors of apricot and cognac from that Liberica. So, I created the Espresso Memento as a drink for worldwide appeal. Because when we create exceptional experiences in the glass, we can reach more people than ever with our cocktails. As you can see on the boards in front of you, I've shared this drink 
with friends and family, coffee and cocktail people around the world. And now with the addition of Liberica, it's tasting better than ever. I'm really glad to be able to come here and serve it for you. I enjoy this drink all throughout the day, but here in Milan, I think it's best as an aperitivo. So, please go ahead and enjoy your espresso memento. Thank you. Fantastic, all finished? Okay, for my warm drink, I wanted to bring you to my home in Australia, where right now it's the middle of winter. Uh, I wanted a drink that was warm and comforting with familiar flavors, but by utilizing technique, create an experience that was exceptional and it showcased the quality of Australian ingredients. So we're gonna start with 25 mils of Poor Tom's Gin. This is a Sydney dry gin and it uses botanicals of green apple and strawberry gum leaf. Next, I've made a apple liqueur with equal parts Granny Smith and Pink Lady apples, both Australian varieties, and I've used a rotary evaporator to cook them down at just 30 degrees Celsius, retaining more fresh apple flavor and acidity. I then add 20% of a neutral spirit to make sure it's shelf stable for the cafes. Here we have 25 mils of a honey caramel this is made with equal parts of Tasmanian leatherwood honey and brown sugar from Queensland. I gently caramelize that over low heat before adding an equal part of water just to dilute it down. I have a gram of Cylon cinnamon, an aromatic uh, species of cinnamon, which is gonna contrast my other ingredients. Now, I wanted to bring you some Australian coffee today. So I'm adding an additional brewed element of batch brew. This coffee comes from Crater Mountain in Australia, and it's uh, produced using the same processes that we used on the Liberica. It's gonna lengthen out the drink slightly and also give us a pleasant raisin note in the drink. But to tie everything together, I'm using the Liberica. This brings texture, chocolate, and orange flavors and really ties all of these ingredients together. The final stage is to pop the entire drink, coffee and all, into the microwave for 40 seconds. This is gonna do a couple things. Firstly, it's gonna rapidly infuse that cinnamon, but more importantly, it's gonna homogenize those coffees. Tying together the batch brew and the espresso to give us a new and exciting flavor of dessert wine. In a commercial environment, the use of batch brew and readily available espresso with the microwave means I can create drinks in under 60 seconds. Fantastic. So, with so much going on, we're gonna be using a map and compass to guide our way to our destination today. We use these tools every day in the cafe help guide our coffee service. But for my drink, it's gonna help us to unlock an exciting flavor transition that takes place as the drinks cool. So what I want you to do is take your first sip when the temperature is between 55 and 53 degrees. Here you'll have a whiny body and you'll be able to see all the ingredients that I've used in this drink in balance. Then take the spoon and uh, give the drink a stir to help cool it down until it reaches 50 degrees and take another sip. Here we get this fantastic flavor transition. The acidity increases. You 
you get a crisp apple note, and this is where you find that dessert wine flavor. The flavors of this drink are very familiar, but its experience is exceptional. So from wherever you've come today, I am glad that I could bring you just a little taste of my home in Australia. For now, I'm going to leave you to enjoy at your own pace. I'm going to say thank you very much for coming on this journey with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'll call my time. All right, that's Sarah for Danny. Ladies well done, and gentlemen, well Danny done. Wilson. Yes. Got a long walk. A well done, mate. a long walk. You happy? Yeah. This is awesome. Whew. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's been quite a long time coming. Yes, there's a lot to ask about. Yeah. But let's start with the journey. Yeah. When did this routine kind of start in its conceptualization? This drink actually began its journey in Brazil in 2018 as a spirit bar drink. Martin actually knows that he was one of the first people to try one of the first iterations. Well, I of remember Belo Horizonte, right? Yep. I remember that the routine, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this was one of my spirit bar drinks that never got to see the light of day. Uh, and now it has. Now it has, because yes. it was just too, too good to uh, you know, leave, leave it by itself. Yeah, it's amazing. So you've obviously had a lot of iterations of it over the past five, four five, years. Five years-ish. How much of a difference has La Barica made? And do you want to talk about what La Barica is? Yeah. Just so we've got some context for people who aren't familiar. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's gone through quite a few different iterations. I've tried it with a, uh, quite a wide variety of coffees. But I ended up with, uh, on the Liberica, just it's a coffee that we started working with recently. Uh, it's got a lot of interesting things about it, like the altitude which it grows. Uh, it's got a slightly lower caffeine level. Uh, but really, for me, it was the intensity of flavor that you get out of it. It does taste like no other Arabica. And it's just got all these qualities which, when you pair them with cocktails specifically, it's just perfect. I would like to pinpoint as well your uh, selection of gins. So we have a Japanese Roku gin yep. using different flowers. And then we have a, a local Sydney-made gin, yep. right? With a strawberry gum and yep. local botanicals. That's, that's excellent choice. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to, obviously, the Espresso Memento, for me, that was a drink. Like, I've been making it for quite some time. Uh, and it's something that I wanted a bit more of a global focus to it. Uh, something that's, yeah, got a, a, a lot of reach in terms of its appeal. Um, but then for my hot drink, I yeah, really wanted to bring it back to Australia, focus on local ingredients. Um, so yeah, finding two gins that fitted those uh, profiles is really good. So you've got some interesting techniques on there. Yep. There's an elephant in the room. The, the microwave. microwave. We should talk about, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the microwave, then we'll talk about the keg, because they're both quite interesting choices. Yes. So do you want to just ch talk us through your kind of, why you chose these things to create your drinks? Yeah, so I, I had her, originally I started using the microwave not on the coffee component. I'd been doing some reading and hearing about some people using microwaves to basically create a more harmonious flavor profile in their cocktails. So I was like, oh, cool, I'll try that out. Obviously, it's got the benefit of being able to heat up the drink and that as well. Um, for a competition setting, it's incredibly consistent because you just press the button and it does the same thing every single time. Ping. Yeah, Job done. it's like making popcorn at yeah. home. But um, the real breakthrough was actually when I put the coffee in the microwave. Uh, and that was a, just a happy accident. I had, I'd made a drink, I'd put the coffee in it. So I'd microwave the ingredients, I put the coffee in it, tasted it, and I was like, oh, I want to try that hotter again. So I just put the whole drink back in and tasted it. And I was like, oh, this is better now. Nice. So. so you talk about uh, temperature, obviously, which is a big part of the competition. Yep. Um, talk us through the tool you're using up there. To talk yes. through temperature. So the little gauge there, uh, that's a tool uh, created by actually one of the baristas that I work with back in Canberra. I've worked with him there since I started in coffee. Um, he originally designed it as a tool for espresso to try and pinpoint those uh, specific notes in espresso. Obviously, there's so much you can uh, get out of a complex espresso. So um, he designed it for that. But then for this competition, it just made so much sense as well. Nice. And you're an experienced competitor as well. Yes. You've, had your, you've competed in Barista and, and Good Spirits before. Spirits, yep. How's this year? Well, I suppose it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Very Let's say, uh, thank, thank you very, you very much. much to thank our judges. judges. Big round of applause, thank please. Cheers. They're doing a very wonderful job. Big Cheers. round of applause for the judges. Come thank on. Thank you very much, judges. Yeah, this is your third World Coffee and Good Spirits. Yep. How has it been different? 
Uh, I'll just more in depth, just really going into the fine-tuned details about every single ingredient, every single, you know, the coffee that I'm using, making sure everything's tasting right, the performance makes sense, satisfying all the criteria that the judges are looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just been, yeah, just fine-tuned details over, over a long period of time. Yeah, you've had the time to think about it. Yeah. Nice. And in terms of, obviously, we have our wonderful machine sponsors, grinder sponsors. How have you found everything to be to work on? Yeah, it's been it's really good. We worked with uh, the cafe races back in Canberra, so that was very familiar for me to, to use. So feels like home. Yeah, very very Australian nice. ingredients, familiar yeah. machine. All makes sense. Of the world. Had to find a little knock box, but apart from that, uh, yeah, it's been great. Well, awesome. Well, let's give a huge round of applause for a competitor from Australia, Danny Wilson. <laughs> and we'll be back very shortly with our next competitor. So see you soon.